We have three primary modes in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Multiplayer, Blackout and Blood of the Dead, or what you might want to call zombies. That's a lot of weapons. In this video, however, we'll just be focusing on the weapons between Multiplayer and Blackout. Combined, these two modes hold 31 to 32 weapons in tank categories, depending on if you consider fists a weapon. Before starting, this weapon list is a setup for weapon guides I'm creating for Black Ops 4. In those weapon guides we will talk about the stats of the weapons from damage and range to idle sway and ADS time, operator mods all the while showcasing in-game footage and testing. An important note here is that we will compare multiplayer and blackout stats because the devs said there will be a difference. For the first video we won't be doing this because it's a lot of, a lot of work. But alongside these videos I will upload blueprints of the weapons and their stats on Patreon. It's for those who are interested in being able to have a look at the build without re-watching the video again. These are one among many rewards for patrons, so if you're willing to support us monetarily, that's what you get in return. Thanks in advance, and with that out of the way, let's go over this list. We'll take a look at all the weapons per category. Most of the weapons will show in multiplayer, a few additional will only be available in Blackout or Zombies and these will be highlighted separately and other will only be available in Blood of the Dead. The ones that only appear in Blood of the Dead, meaning Zombies, won't be showcased in this video for the obvious reason most people are interested in multiplayer and Blackout. Plus to find the footage of every gun is easier when I don't have to include Blood of the Dead, which has a lot of wonder weapons and stuff. Note that we won't go over specialist weapons and abilities either because that's a separate category. Let's start with the assault rifles. First off we have the ICR-7, a fully automatic assault rifle with improved accuracy meaning low recoil and low damage. Second is the Rampart 17, a slow firing and automatic assault rifle with high damage but low accuracy. Following this is the KN-57, an average AK style assault rifle with good damage and decent accuracy. Following that is the Vapor XKG, one of the lesser known assault rifles perhaps, has good mobility, high rate of fire but lower damage, perhaps more of a submachine gun slash assault rifle hybrid. Then we have the Maddox RFB, an assault rifle with a higher rate of fire in class and a large ammo pool at the cost of its damage and accuracy. The final assault rifle is the Graf and this one is only available in Blackout, otherwise it's known as the Galil from Black Ops 1, 2 and 3 and it's a medium damage assault rifle with clean iron sights and very good accuracy. The next most used category are the submachine guns, of which there are six. First we have the MX-9, it's the first submachine gun to unlock, which has MP5-like handling and damage, which is average across the board. Then we have the GKS, an automatic submachine gun with low recoil and high accuracy. Followed by that we have the Spitfire, a submachine gun that Everybody's running and it lacks in every category but in the rate of fire, meaning it will shred up close with around 1100 rounds per minute or 1400 with rapid fire. Then we go to the Cordite, a fully automatic submachine gun that's well rounded in terms of damage and accuracy and has a large magazine capacity. With extended max it can run up to 90 rounds in one magazine. Then we have the Saug 9mm, an automatic submachine gun with great handling high rate of fire but low damage and a small ammo pool. You see this one quite a lot as well because it has an operator mod that allows you to dual wield it. Finally we have the MP40, a classic submachine gun only available in blackout with low rate of fire, medium submachine power and good accuracy. Following the submachine guns up we have the tactical rifle in a category that used to be called marksman rifle. First up we have the Auger DMR, a semi-automatic rifle with the highest damage in class and reliable accuracy at range. The ABR223 is a 3 round burst rifle with high lethality but limited range. Then we have the Swordfish, which is a 4 round burst rifle with a fast cyclic rate and minimal recoil, meaning reliable shots on target. This one I believe has the operator mod so you can get a Penta Burst, which are 5 rounds per shot. And finally we have the SX Model 07, which is only available in Blackout and it's a semi-automatic marksman rifle from the past. Decently strong but outperformed by the other rifles. But for longer ranges tactical rifles won't suffice, so choosing one of the four sniper rifles is your best shot. 
First off we have the Paladin HB50, the first and probably best sniper rifle to unlock. It's bolt action, 50 caliber, meaning high damage and it has a very reliable one shot kill area. Second up is the Outlaw, the second bolt action sniper rifle to unlock. It has a bit lower damage but a higher rechain ring speed than the Paladin, perhaps better for quick scoping. Following that is the SDM, a semi-automatic sniper rifle that fires fast, has a large magazine capacity but low accuracy. Following that we have the Koshka, the third bolt action sniper with fast handling, reliable one-shot headshot kills, but other than that it lacks damage compared to the other bolt action. Following it up with probably the second least favorite category only to be beaten by the sidearms are the light machine guns. First up we have the Titan, the first and most recognizable light machine gun with reliable firepower and the largest ammo pool. Second up is the Hades, a light machine gun with the highest rate of firing class with moderate recoil and a smaller magazine. This one is actually pretty good. Thirdly we have the VKM750, an automatic light machine gun with the highest damaging class at the cost of its mobility and rate of fire. And the fourth light machine gun is only available in Black Hat, double bearing and a light machine gun. Why not? It has a high rate of fire and low to medium damage output, but it can tear up players in close to medium ranges. Then we're moving on to the shotguns, and this time around shotguns are secondary weapons again, similar to the old Modern Warfare 2 days, except this time they're a little less strong. First off we had the MOG-12, the first shotgun to unlock, and its pump action. It's fairly low damage, which makes it a reliable two-shot weapon at best, unless you're very close. If you manage to uh, put some attachment on this, it will be a bit better and you can have a decent one-shot kill range. Following that we have the SG-12. It's a semi-automatic shotgun with the look of an AA-12, with medium damage and great mobility. And now for arguably the least favorite category, the sidearm category has a total of four weapons. First off we have the Strife, the basic semi-automatic pistol balance damage with minimal recoil. Follow that up with the RK7 Garrison, the pistol to represent the Refica B23R or RK5 burst pistols from the previous installments. It has low damage but a fast cyclic rate means a high time to kill and it's a perfect sidearm actually. And finally, I said 4 but there is a category of 3 weapons, it's the Mozu, the double action revolver of this game. It has highest damage in class with even some long range capabilities, only to be held back by its low rate of fire and magazine size. Okay, perhaps the items aren't the least favorite category, that spot is still held by the launchers or the launcher because there's only one. The Helion Salvo is a lock on or free fire rocket, depending on what you want. That's a reliable anti vehicle weapon with anti personnel capabilities. This time around you can put a lot of mods on it, making it very good at taking out streaks. And then we have a category not bound to guns, but for those that might call themselves only use me blade, there is the melee weapons category. It only holds two weapons, once again considering what you might want to call a weapon. First up is the combat knife. Known to everyone, it's a serrated melee weapon that can insta-kill any enemy. Second up are the fists. I guess they can be considered a weapon. The fists are available when you equip either no secondary, primary or any weapon at all. And it does two shot kill, but it has reduced damage over a melee weapon kill with your weapon. So keep that in mind. The last and perhaps most interesting category is one of the wonder weapons. Outside Blood of the Dead it only holds one weapon and that is the ray gun. And the ray gun is only available in blackout, not in multiplayer. The laser shooting pistol was first introduced in Black Ops 1 and still tears up ass in Black Ops 4. Obviously there are more wonder weapons in Blood of the Dead, but as I said, we're not covering those. And that's the list already. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this content. If you made it this far, consider leaving a rating, good or bad, doesn't matter. It provides us feedback and helps the show on the YouTube algorithm, which is quite hard these days as a smaller YouTube channel. Comment down below with your favorite weapon in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. And if you would like to see a weapon guide for a specific weapon, let me know. Or perhaps you have other ideas for different types of videos, let me know down below. I'm already working on the Rampart 17 weapon guide, kind of as a trying things out sort of thing. Before ending the video, here's a quick reminder for those interested in being able to have a look at the build. Without rewatching the video, I designed blueprints of the gear, weapons, skills and talents. 
They're available on Patreon, among other rewards for those who are willing to support us monetarily. The specifics can be found on Patreon. And that's basically it, so I hope you stomp some noobs in multiplayer, get some chicken dinners in Blackout, or whatever they're called in Black Ops 4 these days, and that'll do it. Have a good day. Peace out.